Mark Lynch, The New Arab Wars, Uprisings and Anarchy in the Middle East. In his book, The New Arab Wars, Uprisings and Anarchy in the Middle East, Mark Lynch delves into the consequences of the Arab Spring and the subsequent turmoil that engulfed the region. The book takes you on a journey through the widespread protests for democracy and power sharing, the rise and fall of various regional players, and the bitter proxy wars that have drawn nations and global superpowers into the chaos. Lynch's vivid narrative highlights the complexity of political relationships, the shift in alliances and the role the United States played, or failed to play, in the reshaping of the Middle East. This book sheds light on a range of significant topics such as the Muslim Brotherhood, authoritarianism, and the role of external support in prolonging conflict. The Arab Spring and its Consequences in 2010, the Arab Spring emerged in various Arab countries with millions of peaceful protesters united by their aspiration for democratic reform and the idea of recasting the Arab world. The uprisings were broadcast through Al Jazeera and first ignited in Tunisia and Egypt before hitting Libya. With NATO's intervention, the rebels finally killed Gaddafi in October 2011, but democratic elections could not create a foothold for progressive change. Libya's failure to make a transition from autocracy to democracy foreshadowed the devastation of the civil wars in Syria and Yemen. The Arab uprisings that began as a transnational diffusion ended in transnational repression and birthed transnational proxy wars. Despite enlisting foreign help from global powers such as the United States and Russia, regional doves and hawks also sought help from Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the UAE, Turkey, and Iran. The Rise and Fall of Uprisings The book explores the era of proxy wars where countries sought to extend their influence, resulting in the failure of uprisings. Small but wealthy states and non-state actors like the Muslim Brotherhood started to exert power, but their relationships proved undependable. Egypt is an example of a country that fell from Qatar's political influence to a Saudi coalition after the Muslim Brotherhood's fall. Gradually, peaceful protests were replaced with ideologically hardened activists, and the uprisings failed. The book highlights the potential and failure of the Arab Spring uprisings, which began with the exuberance of Tahrir Square and ended with public massacres in Rabah Circle. The Pitfalls of Proxy Warfare In conflict-ridden countries like Libya and Syria, Outside supporters fuel proxy relationships with local militias to secure their interests, leading to fierce competitions that hinder peace initiatives. The use of local proxies sustains a balance of power in the conflict, preventing any single militia from prevailing, regardless of affiliation or government. This method comes at a cost as it perpetuates the conflict and creates instability in the country. The United States' troubled relationship with Arab allies the article explores the United States' failure to transform the Middle East during the Arab Spring, which resulted in strained relationships with Arab allies. The U.S. strategy to back the democratic process was hindered by a proxy system and stasis, leading potential allies to view America as the kiss of death. The Obama administration was tied to unsuitable proxies, narrowing policy options. Traditional regional allies were tested when Obama recognized the Muslim Brotherhood's victory in Egypt and acknowledged the Inada in Tunisia. Arab leaders rejected America's policy agenda, including promoting democracy, progress on Israeli-Palestinian talks, and a halt to the madness in Syria and Yemen. Saudi Arabia and Israel aimed to freeze Iran, return dictatorship in Cairo, and accelerate the war against Assad. The United States' regional allies' opposition to a nuclear agreement with Iran had nothing to do with an arms race but feared empowering Iran as an existential threat. The chaos roiling the region sprang from the United States' failure to fully engage, but this was due to local allies with opposing preferences and misperceptions of both calamities and opportunities, undermining U.S. power. Syria's Chemical Attack At the height of the Syria conflict, President Bashar al-Assad orchestrated a devastating chemical attack that killed over 1,400 people. This act crossed Obama's red line, and the United States prepared for military retaliation. However, 
there were doubts about whether Assad was truly behind the attack. Some speculated that other countries used it as a false flag operation, while others suggested Assad may have lost control of his forces. In the end, Obama's pivot to Asia made him hesitant to engage in another conflict in the Middle East. Instead, he sought to enlist Congress in the effort, but ultimately, it was Russia who offered a solution. They would allow international inspectors to remove Syria's chemical weapons, averting military action. The incident highlighted the complicated nature of U.S. foreign policy and the challenges of intervening in complex conflicts abroad. Obama's Approach to Syria Despite criticism, Obama's approach to Syria showcased his skilled negotiation and reluctance to defer to the preferences of Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Israel. However, he was unable to effectively advance U.S. interests or intervene in the region due to lack of power. The slow progress of Operation Inherent Resolve to defeat ISIS with broad regional support highlights the difficulty of applying greater military power. Syria's Intervention Dilemma Syria's war is a product of an intervention that went awry. This intervention was based on the idea of a moral high ground, forgetting the civilian impact. Assad leveraged horror tactics to repress opposition and militarized the civil war. Obama's reluctance and red line strategy undermined U.S. credibility and failed to prevent allies from arming Syrian rebels. As a result, Syria became a center of a regional Cold War that left no possibility for rapprochement. The article argues for a U.S. retrenchment from the region and investment in democratic Arabs. The Complex Middle Eastern Landscape Despite hopes of decreasing U.S. military involvement in the Middle East, the Arab Spring and its aftermath led to little change in power imbalances and ongoing conflicts. The Muslim Brotherhood, wrongly labeled as a terrorist group, served as a barrier against extremism but fell victim to opposition and chaotic leadership. Protracted civil wars fueled radicalization in the Syrian insurgency and led to external support of extremist groups. The collapse of the Muslim Brotherhood offered no solution for moderate Islamists and further fueled the resources of extremist groups seeking the nearest conflict. While autocratic governments feared the Brotherhood's popular appeal for genuine change, Islamism is not monolithic, and its fault signaled a growing complexity in the Middle East. Unstable Rivalry the root cause of instability in the Middle East is due to the resistance of the established power structure to democratic change. The outside interventions in Libya, Syria, and Yemen, along with rivalries between Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Qatar, have led to the emergence of extremist groups such as ISIS. The decline of ISIS does not mean the end of their ideas, which are fueled by resistance to the status quo. More than 10 million refugees have been created, and their future is uncertain. The media also played a role in the conflict by amplifying one side's voice. The United States has no clear role, and the only hope is to establish new partnerships that embrace democratic reform. It's crucial to acknowledge that treating Syria as an isolated issue is detrimental to regional stability. The conflict in Syria is part of a more significant problem that requires a long-term solution to prevent a clash of civilizations from occurring. In The New Arab Wars, Mark Lynch offers a comprehensive account of the Arab Spring and the political implications it holds. The book encompasses the intricate relationships and fierce competitions between patrons and the struggles of regional powerhouses to navigate through the ever-shifting landscape of the Middle East. The proxy wars and the role of external actors in the conflicts of Syria, Libya, and Yemen have resulted in devastating consequences, as millions of refugees have been displaced. The book portrays a bleak picture of the Middle East but at the same time holds a glimmer of hope for future democratic reforms within the region. The United States emerges as an outsider with no clear role to play for now, but as the book suggests, opportunities for re-establishing itself in the region may emerge as autocratic states decline and new partners emerge.